personal finance practice problem using Excel. Mutual fund gain loss calculation. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. Example, practice blank, example, answer key. Let's look at it now. Information on the left, calculations on the right. We're imagining that we're investing in a mutual fund. We wanna calculate the cost, the proceeds, and the profit gain or loss. The second tab's gonna have some pre-formatted cells on the right so you could work through the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The third tab where we will be, we're gonna do some of that Excel formatting. If you don't have any of this, that's okay. You can open up a blank worksheet, add this information on the left. If that's what you're doing, I would start out by formatting an underlying baseline formatting of the worksheet first by selecting the entire worksheet, possibly with the triangle up top, right clicking on the selected area, format the cells, and I will typically go to currency to start out with, negative numbers as bracketed and red, no dollar sign, no decimals as the baseline starting point. I'm not gonna hit okay because I already have this. I'm just gonna X out of it, then add your data on the left, making the cells wider as necessary, changing the cells when needed. For example, adding decimals here, which you can do by going to the home tab, numbers and adding decimals, make a skinny C column, and then we're ready to go. So we're gonna imagine we have a mutual fund here. Remember that mutual funds are a little bit different than investing directly in say stocks. For example, when we, direct, when we invest directly in stocks, they represent an ownership interest of the company. Companies being separate legal entities that have their ownership interest broken out into standardized units of shares or stocks. And then we're typically thinking about those that are traded on public exchanges, making them more transparent and accessible to individual investors. So then we might think of a mutual fund as basically uh, taking multiple or investing in multiple stocks, possibly us putting money into the mutual fund as an investor, which was then pooled with other investors' money so that it can then be allocated on a broader array of stocks and helping us to be more diversified with less of an initial investment. So when we think about buying and selling mutual funds, however, we can think of it in a similar kind of fashion as to whether we buy or when we buy, say, one uh, stock, for example, by, by breaking down the mutual fund into basically shares of, in essence, a mutual fund, noting though that the mutual fund reflects this uh, investment in a fund that then has the uh, investments within the mutual fund diversified and spread out over other stocks and possibly bonds and so on other securities okay so the shares that we're going to purchase we're going to be purchasing 200 and we're going to say that the cost per share is 14.24 so the only difference here we're purchasing shares of a mutual fund instead of shares of the stocks but it's going to be working in a similar fashion as to if we just purchased stocks for example in terms of the gain calculation. We're gonna say a year later, uh, we sell the shares and we sell all 200 shares for a price of $17. So we have a gain from the 1425 to the 17. So let's do this on a step-by-step -step basis. We're gonna say, all right, well, what is the total cost when we buy the shares then? We're gonna say, all right, well, let's break out the total cost, total cost. And this is gonna be my header. I'm gonna make column D a little bit wider, put my cursor between D and E, left clicking, dragging it to the right just a bit, just a hair, selecting the top two cells, D1, E1, and then go into the home tab, font group, bucket drop down. And we're gonna make that black and the lettering, we're gonna make that white, black and white on the lettering. So we're gonna say that we purchased 200 shares. So we're gonna say we had 200 shares. I'm just gonna say equals and draw my data from the left that's always good practice that's how you want to set up your information so you can change the data on the left and have it automatically populate on the right so here we go we're going to say this equals the cost per share cost per share i'm hitting tab and then in e3 i'm going to say equals that 1425 and enter now you could have done that more easily i could have just entered one cell i'm going to delete these two just to demonstrate and del delete this one to demonstrate if i had this cell i could drag that to the right using the fill handle or copy and paste it if i so choose grabbing the fill handle drag it to the right 
And there it goes. It brings over the relative cell. If I select these two and drag it down with the fill handle, it should take the relative cells down. I need to add some decimals to this one. So I'm going to go up top and number group, and we're going to add some decimals, decimalizing it. And then we're going to go to the font group and underline. And this will be the total cost. Total cost, we're going to just say it's going to be equal to 200 up to, that's an E2 times the 1425 up one E3. And you could add some pennies just to check out if there's any pennies involved here. Number group, add some decimals, no pennies involved. We're going to then uh, make it blue and bordered. So I'm going to select these items here and let's make it blue and bordered. That's our normal custom. I'm going to write, well, let's do it up top. Let's go to the font group, bucket drop down and I made it black on accident. That's the blue I want right there. Let's go in the more colors. It's also in here on the standard color wheel, that blue, that's the one I choose typically. Home tab, font group, let's make some borders around it because you can't see any borders now. And I like the borders personally. Borders are good. They help us define what's going on around here. Any case, and then we got the sales proceeds. So when we sold it, we sold 200 shares for 17. Now also note that you might when investing, do this actually in the reverse because you might be saying, hey, I'm gonna invest 2,850 per paycheck or whatever per month or something like that. And then you would be determining how many shares you would be purchasing. You might not be first thinking about when investing in a mutual fund, the number of shares you want, and then trying to figure out how much you need to invest, right? You might be saying, hey, this is how much I need to invest which means that I'm going to be purchasing 200 shares, right? Because you're probably thinking that you're going to invest some certain amount into a mutual fund and buy the appropriate number of shares that you could get for basically that investment. Okay, so then we're going to say when we sell the proceeds, we're going to say sales proceeds. So we're going to say we sold all 200 shares at a future date. One year later, we'll say select in these two. We're gonna go up top, home tab, font group. Let's go to the bucket drop down and make that black and white. So we're now we're gonna sell the number of shares. I'm gonna say equals and pick up the shares on the bottom. This equals the shares. Now note, we could sell something other than the full 200 shares at the, at the end here, right? So we don't have to sell all the shares. I'm gonna say that we're selling all the shares. We could then change the data if we so choose and we might check that out uh, after we do this calculation. So this is gonna equal the price of the 17. So price, this equals the 17. And so let's make, let's add some decimals, even though we don't need them because we might like change the data in the future and add some decimals. Let's put an underline here, font group and underline, and that'll be the sales proceeds. Multiplying this out, this equals up to that being an E7 times up one E8. That's going to give us the 3,400. Let's add some decimals just to be consistent with what we have up top, even though there's no pennies at this time. Then we're going to go and make that blue and bordered. So let's make this cell. We're going to go home tab bucket drop down blue and border. Now, again, when you're putting money out or taking money out of the mutual funds, you might be saying, I want to take out 3,400 might be the way you're thinking about it. And then uh, at the price of 17, the current price, how many shares would you be removing? Meaning when you're putting money in and out of the mutual fund, you're probably thinking in terms of total dollar amount that you're investing and then buying the number of shares that would be appropriate. And when you're selling, you're probably thinking about how much money you need and then, and then how many shares you're gonna sell in order to get how much money you need unless you're selling the whole thing as we're doing here. Okay, so then we got the gain or loss. This is the profit or gain. And uh, it, there could be tax consequences if we were to sell the mutual fund and so on and so forth, depending on how where the mutual fund is and whatnot. So, you know, is it under an IRA or a 401k plan, whatnot? But the difference will be the gain that we had, if, that we had. So home tab, font group, let's make this black and white, black and white. And we're just gonna say, all right, this is equal to the sales proceeds. And this is gonna be equal to the 3,400. And this is gonna be equal to the total cost. Notice how everything is nice and connected here. So that if I change my data on the left-hand side, everything should change automatically and this is going to be the profit or gain it might you could have a loss too depending 
on the circumstances and we might change the data so you could check that out but in any case we're going to say this is going to be equal to the 3004 minus the 2850 there's the 550 let's add some decimals to all this stuff home tab number group decimalized and all of it at once put in an underline here home tab font group underline making some blue borders selecting these items font group border it up and hit the bucket drop down make it blue there we go okay let's do this one more time this time we're gonna we're gonna do the game calculation a little bit more directly it's it's nice to be able to see how to do this a couple different uh, ways you'll see it presented a couple different ways it might be easier at times to do them one way or the other so let's do the same calculation a little bit differently over here I'm gonna make a skinny F column and then we're gonna work in column G so to make a skinny F I'm gonna take the skinny C because I want it to be just as skinny as C so it's all everything's all nice and uniform so we're gonna hit the format paintbrush on skinny C column and then just apply that paintbrush one stroke down one paintbrush stroke and the whole fence is painted so here we go <clears throat> so now we're going to get this is going to be the profit or gain calculation we'll do it kind of directly and let's make this cell a little bit wider and i'll select from g1 to i1 g1 to i1 font group bucket drop down we'll make this black and white and this is going to be i'm going to do a sub calculation now this is going to be per share profit per share profit brackets and i'm putting a colon there because this is a sub calculation so now we're going to think about, about it on a per share basis so we'll let's first think about the sales proceeds which is the 17 dollars so this is going to be equal to the 17 dollars and then we're going to think about the cost which is equal to the 1425 so this is the 1425 so the so the per share profit i hit two space bars because i don't want to call in there tab tab i'll put on the outer column i know i need to add some decibels i'm going to do it all at once this will equal the 17 minus the 14. let's add some decimals so we can see a bit more detail we're going to go to the home tab number group you want to recognize you got to decimalize so you can fully recognize what's happening here with down to the penny so let's put an underline here we're going to go to the home tab font group and underline and let's add some let's add some uh board some indentation so what i'm trying to say spit it out man spit it out would you i was trying to say indentation home tab alignment will indent it here and then double indent home tab alignment double indent okay so then we got it so then so that's how much we're getting per share on terms of the gain and then we just need to think how many how many did we sell how many shares did we sell two hundo two hundo that's how many shares we sold of the mutual fund let's put an underline there and that'll get us to once again i'll just equals the same bottom line here profit or gain slash loss and that's going to be equal to the 275 we got per share times the 200 shares boom 550 let's add some decimals just to uh just in case for later because we can then change the data on the left and play around with it a bit which we might try playing with it a bit we're going to select these items let's make that border blue font group border bucket drop down blue border blue okay so then now now obviously note a couple things we don't have to sell all the 200 down here so what if we just decided to sell a few shares we could say what if we sold 50 shares then i'll make this a little bit a little bit larger notice that this calculation doesn't quite work because because we took it based on based on the total cost minus the proceeds at the 200 but you can see the calculation is going to basically adjust over here as we sold it we're just looking at the number of shares we sold so notice the way you format your worksheet can basically be useful in terms of you know what you, what's the purpose of what you're going to be using it for and also to kind of understand the calculation in a few different ways let's bring that back well let's not do it that way i'm going to bring this back to 200 and then we could have a loss so if i sold this for if i sold this for or i bought it for like 21 
dollars and then i sold it for 17 and then of course we would have a loss down here this time they're both the same both calculations are correct because i'm sell i'm selling the same amount as i bought the whole basically investment on either side and then you could see the the calculations down below now remember you could have tax implications when you sell the mutual funds like you do when you sell shares because you could have capital gains and you might have capital losses that you can net net out against the capital gains and so on and so forth we won't get into all the tax implications at this time let's just bring this back to the starting point this is the 14.25 and like i say you want to be practicing these are great little problems to practice with building your tables drawing your information from the data that you set up on the right or somewhere which is a data set and then being able to adjust your practice problems adjusting the data letting that flow through your excel worksheets so you can run multiple scenarios